In this Luminar AI photo editing tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my editing process of this photograph and show you how I took it and turned it into this. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll notice that this is not my normal style. I recorded this one without any audio. I just did my edit with the intention that I would record the audio over the top. And as you'll see coming up, it's actually really hard to keep up explaining what I'm doing. So please do me a favor and let me know what you think of this style of video. I'd really be interested in your feedback. Thanks so much. Enjoy the edit, guys. Okay guys, this is a very different approach for me doing this video in this way. This is a pre-recorded edit on this photo that's on screen now, and I'm now narrating over the top on how I processed it. Actually, it was this photo. Now there's a reason I pre-record things, so you don't make mistakes. Anyway, Accent AI, I always like to throw that on just so that I can get a feel for how much data actually exists in the file. The same as doing this with the exposure slider. Do I have details in the shadows? Do I have details in the highlights? And now I know how far I can push that file. Now I've just played with the temperature just to warm things up because I want to give this a really nice warm sunset feel. That's when it was taken and I want that to be reflected in the photo. You can see I've boosted up the shadows there, so we've brought back a really nice bit of detail into our model, Sammy, and the trees as well. And now I'm just bringing back some detail in the highlights too. I've dropped down the exposure overall because I know that I can brighten things up later, and I'm going to do that with some local masks over our model. But now I just want to make sure my horizon's nice and, nice and straight. And I've just bumped by mistake the composition AI, and I think it's done a pretty poor job in this case. I want to keep my composition pretty similar to how I shot it in camera, keeping the sun flare in and our model. I just wanted to fix that horizon line. Now here you'll see I'm just putting in a little bit of accent AI. I think a little goes a long way with that tool. It's really powerful, but you can overcook things pretty quickly. Same with structure AI. Grab, grab the slider, push it to 100, bring it back, and kind of see what it's doing. And then if you want some in, you can put that in. But in this case, I thought, nah, I'm just going to leave it all out. Now here, I've bumped up the saturation, just so I can see the colors a little better. And now I'm going to start to play around moving the hues, shifting the hues so that I'm getting a better color harmony through my image. And what I'm wanting to do is push things more towards the orange and yellow color palette. So the greens you can see I've pushed towards the yellow, the yellows I'm pushing them slightly towards the oranges. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted to play off the red of the dress with more green against it as a complementary color or go rather than going complementary colors with that just harmonize things into that orange and red zone and that's what I did and I'm thinking the blues really do stand out uh, but not in a good way and so I've desaturated them with the saturation component within that color palette there Moving on from here, I had a little play around with these detail sliders just to see whether it was worth bringing out some detail in the grass, maybe in the clouds. But in the end, I really didn't care for what it was doing to the edit. So I left those alone as well. But this is a great thing with Luminar, I think, is that it's no harm playing around with things because it's all slider based, unlike some other editors where if you want to make a change, you, you're all in on making that change. Luminar, you just grab that slider and give it a little play around, see if you like what it's doing. Here I'm just looking at the sharpening and seeing, okay, how much sharpening do I want? And because I've got a very high megapixel camera, it's 45 megapixels, I need to push that sharpening radius just a little higher than what you would if your, um, if your megapixels are slightly lower. Um, just I just feel it works a little better. And here I'm just playing with that sharpening mask just to make sure that we're getting a nice sharp image, but it's not over sharpening her skin too much. And I'm happy with that. And the next thing I look at is just adding a little bit of vignetting just to darken the edges of the frame. And that just helps to draw our eye into the center of the photograph. From here, I'm moving on to that creative section. Oh no, 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 I'm not. I've thought, hey, how about we play around with the denoise? Because um, sometimes when you use denoise, it, it takes a lot of the texture and detail from the photo and kind of smudges it. And I was wondering in this instance if I could actually do that to my benefit in creating a kind of painterly look to the photo, just seeing whether I liked that. And 
while it could be quite cool for the grass and the trees adding this sort of effect um, I don't think it's good for the model now if you look in the top left every time I'm moving the slider now um, Luminar is having to work to calculate these adjustments because every time you're adding adjustments to your photo they're being compounded one thing on top of another on top of another and the more you add the more you're asking of the processor to show you what that effect looks like um, so anyway now moving on to atmosphere AI and I just wanted to I'm wanting to add sun rays into this photo just enhance the little bit of sunlight that's coming through already um, but as you know for any rays of light to show up you need some atmosphere for those rays to appear in so I'm adding some layered fog and what I'm going to do is just paint it away from the dress because I don't want it overlaying on the dress I don't want to lose that nice saturation of the red that we've got so I've done a pretty rough mask there just to take it away but adding in that layer of fog nice and easy um, if I was doing that again in, in Photoshop which I've been prone to do in the past because um, I do like my atmospheric effects but in Luminar it's really easy just to add it and then if you don't like it pull it away from here I'm just adding the sun rays and I'm putting it in the right position and I know I'm not going to be doing anything with these sun rays in the sky so all I'm worried about at the moment is getting the direction right and looking at the bleed of the light coming from the sun through to our model because I want to use those lines to kind of draw our attention from the sun to the model and from the model back to the sun in the distance and here I'll just grab the sun rays warmth because I want to get the color of the rays rather than from being just a colorless white I want to warm it up and push it into that color palette of orange and yellow that we're trying to work with in this photo <gasps> take a breath Anthony wow there's a lot of talking first time I've ever done a video this way so I'm, I'm kind of excited and I'm like well there's a lot to talk about as, <laughs> as I'm going through this um, so I'm trying to get my thought process across as uh, I'm watching the edit so there's a lot that goes on in my mind. Anyway, back to, back to talking about the edit. Um, so I've decided to grab the eraser so that, as I said before, I don't want the rays up in the sky really. I'm more worried about just having those rays of light coming from the sun to our model. So I'm just gonna feather them away by just painting them away lightly. The opacity of my brush is set to 50 at the moment. So it's not a full 100% erase. It's just working at 50%. And I can do the same thing in the foreground as well. Just take them away just slightly so it's not coming so far forward. And I'm liking the look of it so far. It's giving it a bit more personality to this photo. And just to finesse things, I'm just making sure that I'm happy with the position of the sunray center. And I'm turning that off and on just to do a nice little comparison of a before and after the effect. Again, just making sure I'm happy with it. I always like to work pretty heavily with any tool I'm working with as in I push the amount right up pretty high 100% sometimes and then you can see exactly what it's doing that makes it so much easier to finesse the other sliders and once you've got all of those right then come back to the amount slider and you can just ease it off to a point that you're much happier with. Now I'm jumping into the mood section here and this is one of my favorite parts of Luminar because I just feel like everything gets tied together so much better once you've applied the appropriate LUT. So as you're probably aware, a LUT is short for a lookup table and that comes from the movie industry and that's a way that they create these beautiful color graded uh, cinematic pieces and it's just applying colors, color information to what exists underneath so in this case I've gone for Santa Barbara which the name just describes the fact that we've we've got an orangey yellowy uh, color grade going on over our photo and I just feel that's helping to enhance and harmonize that piece now I've moved on to mystical which is a great little filter just for giving a sense of a mystical feel to, to the photo and I don't think you want to push it too far with that one but it's nice to use in just a small percentage now in the portrait section that I've jumped into now I was just thinking her face is quite dark in this shot can we help it out with a little bit of face light 
and that's exactly what I've done. Just seven percent. I didn't want too much. The rest of the the tools here, I was quite prepared to ignore, but um, I thought I would just just see whether the um, the skin AI could help clean our model skin up just a little bit. Um, and here I was a little confused because I think, well, I was confused. I'm thinking Luminar AI was a bit confused because the bleaching of the yellow there, I'm thinking it's got a little confused with the sun rays filter that we applied before. And so now I've zoomed in, it's uh, done something strange, but uh, it was enough for me to see where I wanted to put that skin AI amount slider. Now the body AI, I really, for me, it's, it's a no-no. It is a no-no, but I was just curious. I thought I will just slam that all the way to 100 and see what it does, and it's basically made our model pencil thin, and that's not a good look for anyone. So, um, but I did think here, uh, I would try the abdomen slider, uh, just the, the position that the model's in. Um, you know, may, maybe it's not as flattering as it, as it could have been, particularly around her waist. So I just had a little play around with that abdomen slider. But the, in the end, um, I think I've, yeah, applied just a little bit of that. And here's where I realized that Lightroom was in the background running this whole time, uh, swallowing a lot, a lot of the computer resources. I had Lightroom running, I had Photoshop running while I was working in Luminar. So I was like, why are things slowing down um, for me at the moment? And that would be why. I was also recording the video as well. So I had a lot, I was asking a lot of my processor while I was doing all this. Um, here I've, I'm playing around with a tool I don't often use much, which is the high key filter. And that's why I'm grabbing all of these sliders here because I'm having a play around um, because I don't know this tool as well as I know some of the other tools. And I didn't expect it to really be doing anything useful for me in this picture. But when I started sliding it up, I liked what it was doing on the model. Um, and as you see, as I lift the amount, it's actually brightening her up and just giving her a bit more pop off of the off of the um, screen, if you will. <laughs> if you will, please do, because that's what it is. She's popping off the screen there a bit more with this filter, and I really like that. So I'm just painting it in with the with the brush. I'm basically using Luminar's um, mask that applies directly to every tool that's there. It's always available. And I've decided rather than apply it to the whole picture, I am just going to paint it in around the model and the grass. And I was quite happy with that. So for finessing any photograph, one of the keys, the absolute keys for me is to look at your photo on a localized basis and say, what do I need to do to certain areas of the photo? So here you can see I'm painting over the top of the model painting over the trees because I know I want to brighten this area of the photo up. Not the whole photo, just her. And so you can see as I lift the exposure, now I've painted that mask, it's just affecting her. And I'm just trying to keep it semi subtle there, just uh, plus 74, and I've just boosted the shadows slightly as well. Now I'm gonna add another local mask and this time, I'm going to deal to the sky. I want to warm the sky up and that's going to drop those blues back slightly. And I'm also going to reduce the brightness in the upper part of the sky. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Even though we're seeing it affecting the whole picture, I'm going to paint this mask back in over the top of the sky. And as I start painting that, I'm thinking, well, I probably don't need to do this with the brush. Uh, what I can do is actually come in and use a gradient filter, which is absolutely brilliant for doing skies because it's a nice soft transition from the full effect to none of the effect, and it, it's run through a nice smooth gradient. And as you desaturate things sometimes, sorry, as you reduce the exposure sometimes, the saturation can actually creep up on you, and that's why I've corrected that by dropping the saturation down. We're now onto our third adjustment mask and here what I'm wanting to do is actually create a nice warm glow around the sun and so I'm not worried about anything else in the picture here just what effect it would have around the sun and so I've created a brighter exposure and I've pushed the warmth all the way to 100 and here I'm going to use one more mask and that is the radial mask which is a 
great circular mask and that's full effect right in the center of that first circle and then between the inner circle and the outer circle we have a nice smooth transition as that fades off to nothingness and so now I'm just playing around with uh, the size of this and just getting getting what I think is an appropriate size for this adjustment mask and here I'm changing the angle of it and stretching it out as well so that it bleeds out towards our model and there as we look at our before and after um, that's that's a pretty pretty insane change from where we started and I was really happy with that edit and here we are guys we can see our before and our after and you can see that we've come quite a long way thank you so much for watching guys please leave me a comment let me know what you thought of the edit let me know what you thought of this video style as well it's quite different for me so i'll catch you guys in the next video cheers for watching bye